in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank God for everybody that's here tonight. It is midweek press word service time. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's time to feast. It's time to feast. And we thank God for the table has been spread. And we're excited about the word tonight. Now, uh, as we always begin with, before we begin with prayer, we want you to also, uh, those of you that are watching us live, please host your watch parties. You can turn me down just a little bit and uh, host uh, watch parties, like, share. If you're on our YouTube channel, Faith Life for YouTube, and let people know we're here at the temple. Uh, you got to zoom in on me a little bit more. Thank you. Close the shot. Uh, you know, the, uh, the video is so important. When you're watching TV at home, you don't see shots far away like that. That's how we have to look at it when we are doing the services as well. Amen. I uh, know I got this shiny ball head, and, and, and it's, it, it's easy to pick it up. Amen. All right. Now, also, this is Council Week. Uh, we are so grateful today uh, the council kicked off uh, with a golf tournament. I, I'm not physically able, wanted to be uh, in the tournament, but I'm not physically able. This knee is just giving me too much trouble, and I didn't want to take a chance on uh, re-injuring or exasperating uh, the injury to my, my knee. But tomorrow we will be journeying down, and we thank God for all of you. Now, if you did your pre-registration, I didn't see anybody put paid by their name uh, and so we need uh, uh, that KJ will come, and as they come in, he'll walk this roster around, and we need you to put also your dollar amount in the totals column uh, as well. Y'all, I know it's been two years since y'all had to do this, but they, some of y'all just forgot, put pay by your name on the outside so we know you paid uh, so that we can go down to the council and take care of your registration. We thank you again. Uh, for supporting our Texas State Council, uh, the best council in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. Amen. All right. Uh, we also want you to continue to pray. We have been uh, listing multiple people that stand in need of prayer. Uh, and you definitely know someone that is in need of prayer. Uh, but I want to encourage you, I admonish you uh, to remember to always Intercede for your brother and your sister. Paul thought it was so important that he said we should we should always pray. And he talked about praying without ceasing. Uh, the biblical uh, examples of us praying for one another are many. And so we want to continue to do that. Tonight we want you to continue to pray for First Lady's uh, grandmother, uh, affectionately known as Mama Scrap. Uh, Minnie Bell Farmer, we want you to continue to pray for Deacon Roberts uh, as he uh, goes through his illness with his feet. I uh, want you also to continue to pray for his brother, Brother Greg, who is battling cancer. Uh, and is there anyone else? I don't want to miss anyone. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Davis, uh, uh, Minister Davis' father. We want to continue to pray healing uh, for all of these names that we've called out. Amen as well. Mm -hmm. the Reynolds, the Reynolds family as well, and uh, anyone else, call it out, call it out. Uh, amen. I want to pray for Sister Walter Robertson as well. Amen. We want to pray for Sister Long's family. And the, there are so many more that are in need of prayer. Let's go before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight. Thank you for all this opportunity to gather in this place, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you tonight, God, for your, your always on time. You may not come when we want you to, but you have never been late, and we thank you for it tonight. We pray, God, that you would hear your servants on tonight, Lord, that we would find ourselves in a position to where you would hear us and not only hear us, but answer prayers. Send healing for sick bodies, Lord. Restore uh, that which the, the, the body has lost, God, the vitality and healing and movement of joints and, Lord, clarity of thought. We pray, God, healing from cancers and tuberculosis, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. We're praying, Jesus, not so that we can brag or boast that you did what we asked you to do, but, God, so your name will be glorified. We pray, Lord, 
uh, for First Lady's grandmother, Lord. Uh, we love her dearly, Lord. Been a much, much help to many over the years. Ninety-six years, God, you have blessed her. Praying, God, that you lay, relieve her body of all pain and discomfort, God. Strengthen the family, Lord. It is difficult when you see a loved one going through. Difficult to see them hurting. And God, we know you are able. You can turn anything around. God, you told that prophet, Lord, you told even God Hezekiah, you told, Lord, that, the, that every man is appointed uh, once to die. We pray tonight, God, that you would help us to be in a position, Lord, that when we meet you, God, we meet you for eternity. Lord, we pray in for the church. Lord, continue to lead and guide us. Bless every portion of this ministry, those that selfishly, Lord, bring out, come out, Lord, to volunteer their times. Bless their families and their homes. See that provisions are made, Lord, that they may have no lack or need. We thank you tonight and we give you praise. Lord, as we called out multiple names tonight, we know you can heal them. And I believe everybody in here is of the same mind, the same heart, that with your stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Again, please share our YouTube channel with your uh, fellowship. Let them know. Take your screenshots and say, hey, meet us uh, every Wednesday, every Sunday. Meet us here live so that we can partake of the bread of life together. And uh, we thank you all. Again, we give you an opportunity to sow your tithes and your offerings Please, we're giving you this opportunity. Go to our website at faithforyoutube.com. Sow your tithes, your offering, and trust that God will bless it and multiply it when you get your harvest, that he will exceed your expectation. Tell your neighbor, I show enough need of exceeding it abundantly above all type of blessing. And then just look back and tell them, say, won't he do it? And refer back to him appropriately. What's your answer? Yes, he will. We're going to give you an opportunity to do that tonight. Uh, multiple ways to give. Uh, as you can see, the Tidely app. If you don't have the Tidely app or the Givelify app, you can download these either with Google Play or if you go to the App Store, if you have an iPhone, download these and connect with us, Temple of Faith Apostolic Ministries or Temple of Faith Apostolic Church. Um, we are located in the city of Colleen, Texas. Uh, our mailing address is also there. Cash out is at Faith Life 238. And we thank you again for all those that sow seeds and sow them so faithfully. We, we thank you in Jesus' name. Seed. Please use the remarks column. He's strong, he's mighty, your seed. and wherever you look, you won't be able to find anyone like him. tonight. 
Again, don't riff, don't forget, if you're writing checks, make them payable to Temple of Faith. Amen. All right, y'all kind of grade that music out. When we transition, you got to learn how to grade it out so that it's not abruptly uh, g cut off. All right, this and this, um, amen, all right, I like that. All right, and y'all know my favorite scripture concerning giving comes from uh, the book of Luke, the sixth chapter at the 38th verse. Y'all know it, what does it say? Can we read it together? What does it say? Give and it what? How? Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure, it shall be what? Yes, it will. It'll be measured to you again. I like that last word because that last word signifies you've already accepted the word of God into your heart and you're in covenant relationship with him. This is why we don't have to have any tricks or gimmicks concerning our giving. The word of God stands by itself. Amen? All right. Again, as we always spotlight, uh, some, of the some of the most wonderful young people in the world, and I am biased, yes, because uh, the majority of them are part of this ministry, and I've had the opportunity to see all of them grow uh, at some point in their lives, and so we thank God for them. Uh, these are our young people, part of our youth ministry, uh, that are college students. And uh, although they may be out uh, for summer break, some are still seeking uh, through summer semester, uh, but we want you to support these young people through uh, the cash app. Now listen, you don't, if you don't have cash app, you can still sow a seed into these young people to help defer the cost of college. Y'all know my feelings about this. College is overly expensive. It is ridiculously expensive. Uh, and I believe that if we get involved, we can change that. But in the meantime, we have to support our young people. The stress that is put on our students that go to college, the financial stress, takes away from their learning. Imagine what they could do, the, the amount of uh, progress they can make without the stress of worrying about how they're going to pay for college. Uh, I've received messages this past year uh, from some of our youth members and some of these young people on this, on this screen uh, that were struggling while they were in college. Uh, some not enough food to eat. We, you know, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to send them some money. Uh, you know, there, there are so many ways now. Instacart, I didn't know nothing about that, but I learned about Instacart. Uh, go pay for their food and tell, go pick it up. And in some cases, they'll deliver it. But nevertheless, we should not have to do this. This country has the moniker of the greatest country in the world. And yet, the college isn't free for its citizens. And all you have to do is a simple Google, shirt, Google search of, of countries that offer college free for its citizens. I challenge you to do this one of the few times you can get on your phone in church. I challenge you to do it. And you will see that that list is over 20 countries that offers college free for its citizens. But one country you won't see on that list is the United States of America. We've got to change this. And the only way we're going to change it is if you get involved, you start holding these elected officials accountable, and you make them know that this is a hot bud subject for you. Now, if you don't have this app already, those of you that are part of the temple, you already know. You definitely should have this app in your app store. Some of you got pages of apps, four, five, six, seven, eight pages of apps on your phone. Download one more called the Five Calls app. The Five Calls app is an important app. Why? Because once you get this app and you put in your, uh, your zip code, uh, your information is going to populate the contact information for your elected officials in that area. And don't be afraid to call them. Don't be afraid to email. Don't be afraid to show up at their local offices. Now, I'm not telling you to go to their local offices and cut the food. Don't do that, because God's people know how to act. Oh, I got an absentee, I got an amen through absentee ballot. Thank you. Amen. We just saw in the news today, some some person went up to, to, to the Capitol and, and as soon as he got out of the cab, called 911 and said, I'm about to, I'm about to do harm to uh, Justice Brent Kavanaugh. It's, it's some, y'all already know that everybody that's walking the streets is not of sound mind. But nevertheless, we want you to download this app. 
get in contact with these elected officials. Senator John Carter is a Republican representative for this area. Uh, we have others that are representing this area on the Democratic side. And I'm going to tell you now, I could care less what your political, political affiliation is. Uh, once they are in the office, once they're in the position, they have a duty to what? To serve all the people. They don't, they don't have a duty to just serve those of their particular party. They must serve all the people. And so I want y'all to start getting involved. And as you can see it, it says, turn your passive participation into active resistance. Facebook likes, and Lord, you know we can like stuff and keep it moving, don't we? Uh-huh. Twitter retweets. Can't create the change you want to see. Calling your government and emailing your government officials. These individuals, when they hear from you, some of you, all you got to do is Google Congress persons or your, Cong your congressional representatives for my area. And when you Google search it, they'll probably ask you for a zip code, and it'll pull them up. They have offices right here in the city of, of Killeen, Temple, Austin, and it's real easy for you to get in contact with them. But the reason why we don't have college free and the reason why President Biden uh, was, was barely whispered he wanted to try to get the first two years of college free. The only reason why he's whispering is because there's not enough support for it. But I believe if you can do two years, you can do four. And we got proof over the last few months of the amount of money that they have been sending uh, to uh, Ukraine in their fight against uh, tyranny. So don't tell me you can't afford to pay for it. You can find money where you want to find it. And our government is good for doing that. Amen? All right. I just want to really stress this because it really bothers me to see the number of young people that go to college and they're stressed out. Uh, one of our youth members, I won't call their name, uh, got, a bit, got a call, they come to the financial aid office. If you don't pay uh, 7000 and so-and-so dollars by this date, uh, we're going to put you out of college. That's foolishness. Parents, we, not, we ought not allow our children to have to go through that. And I'm, some of us parents in here, you still paying on your student loan debt. Lord, help us, Jesus. The average college student graduates college with a minimum of $32,000 in debt. They don't even have a job, and they're already in debt. So we've got to change this. Amen? All right. Y'all know I push this kind of stuff because I, I believe we can, we can make change happen if we do it together. Dare to Care Outreach Ministry is still in need of volunteers. Uh, those of you that want to, it is good uh, to support this ministry because it's vital and it helps this community. Every Saturday, our volunteers are here, uh, 7 a.m., some earlier, giving out free clothing and free food for those that are in need, and we want you to, to support this ministry. If you would like to volunteer, just simply call or email, leave a message. Someone will get back to you. This is another way, parents, you can enhance your young person's college resume. A lot of them don't know, what, I need a college? Yes, you do, because you're competing against every other student across the nation for these positions. I had the honor of going with one of our youth members uh, down to Prairie View for her uh, orientation. Was so impressed, thoroughly impressed with the university and their, their um, presentation of, of academics uh, as well as the financial part. And uh, I'm telling you now, uh, you, gotta, you gotta increase that, that uh, likelihood of you getting those scholarships and grants uh, and they talked about your college resume. And so this is a way you can also bolster this resume uh, through volunteerism. Uh, one of our daughters, uh, Shalandre, this, oh Lord, it's been, a, oh man, almost 10 years or more ago, uh, even longer than that, about 12, 13 years ago when she was trying to get into Harvard. And uh, we learned uh, that process, uh, these Ivy League schools is not like a regular college. Uh, she had to have a college resume, and it had to be thick. Uh, and we were we were learned a lot in that process, and so we want you to do the same. Amen? Smile.amazon.com. If I were to do a poll in here, uh, by show of hand, how many people shop on Amazon? I'm sure just about everybody's hand in here would go up. Well, we want you to continue to do that, but I want you to use this website from now on. Smile.amazon.com. Why? This is the same site, same products. The only difference is this billion-dollar company has decided to create smile.amazon.com to give you an opportunity to pour back into charitable organizations. When you get to the website, use your regular login credentials. Check that keep me logged in box. 
go to the upper left hand corner, hit that drop down box. And I hope that you will select Temple of Faith Apostolic Ministries as your charitable organization. And a half percent of everything you spend on that site will be donated back to this ministry. Now, listen, a half percent is not a lot of money. I told y'all I came up into that. Give me a nickel worth of cookies uh, day. So some of y'all might be might might have lived long enough to remember that. You go to the to the to the local grocery store and they will open up a pack of cookies, Deacon Rogers, and sell you some out of it. Well, they don't they don't do that too much no more. But nevertheless, a half percent is not a lot of money. So we want you to we want you to copy this banner. Go to our Facebook page or our website. Copy it. Share it to all your social media platforms. And say something personal about it so that your fellowship knows you want them to support this ministry using smile.amazon.com. Texas State Council. The Texas State Council is in session. Yes, they are. Uh, as we opened up, they kicked it off today uh, with a lot of the pastors. And even Pastor Rick was out on the golf course, y'all. Uh, he didn't swing no club. He just drove the golf cart. Uh, but nevertheless, I really wanted to, to go. Uh, but I don't want to take a chance on uh, re-injuring or exasperating my knee injury. Uh, but they had a really good time. Now, tomorrow, uh, the council kicks off uh, big time. And so anybody that's going, I hope you've already made your hotel reservation. I'll be leaving tomorrow as well. Uh, I want you to definitely uh, support the Texas State Council. They will be live on Facebook uh, for the evening services at 7 p.m. each night, Thursday night and Friday night. Y'all should already have followed. If you haven't, go to the Texas State Council on Facebook. I want you to follow them. I want you to like, share the live so you get the notifications when they go live. So please go to the Texas State Council on Facebook or you can go to the website, TexasStateCouncil.org. That's TexasStateCouncil.org. And there is also a link on there, I believe, when they do the live feeds on the events page, you can hit that link. But we, most of us know how to operate Facebook, so it shouldn't be an issue. And I think they'll also be live on YouTube, and I'll see if I can send that information back as well. Please support it. Uh, I believe Bishop Marvin Sapp, uh, the host church, is Chosen Vessel, and uh, the pastor there is now uh, Bishop Marvin Sapp. I believe he's teaching a class on tomorrow as well. Uh, if nothing else, half of y'all going to want to come because you hoping Bishop Sapp, gonna, Marvin Sapp going to sing. You just want to hear him sing. Never would have made it. Yeah, some of I know some of y'all, that's all you want to hear. Uh, but nevertheless, please come and support the Texas State Council. Amen. And on this Sunday, the 12th of June, our usher department, the usher board is hosting a, listen, y'all got to stop all of this. I mean, <clears throat> I'm going to support you, uh, but goodness, I'm trying to slim down. What do they say? Uh, get my, my summer body. I'm trying to slim it down and trim it down. And here y'all come with ice cream Sunday on Sunday. Uh, but listen, we're going to support you. Everything in moderation. $5 is the cost. If you like toppings and sprinkles, it's an additional $3. Support this uh, wonderful auxiliary. Our ushers work very hard. Uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the services every week. Uh, they not like those ushers when I came up. Them ushers was mean. Lord have mercy. I was scared of the ushers in my church because uh, they had permission to whoop you back then. But, you know, this is a different age now. But please support the usher department this coming Sunday for their Sunday, ice cream Sunday on Sunday. Amen? And coming up is our Vacation Bible School. I forgot to put the new one up. I'm sorry, sis. I'll, I'll fix that. We have a new um, flyer for Vacation Bible School that has the QR code. Now, what I want you to do, sis, you can probably print off some of those and post them on the, in the bulletin in the foyer. Uh, you can scan that QR code so that you can register for Vacation Bible School. How many of you already registered? Let me see your hands. Good, good, good. Sister uh, Monet at the bank at the uh, Bancor South. She's been asking somebody, I know y'all probably got her number, send her the flyer so that she can go ahead and register her girls for our vacation Bible school. Now, unfortunately, I probably will not be here uh, because of, of family uh, issues, 
Uh, but we want you to come out and support Vacation Bible School. Bible School Sister Natasha Wilson and her staff, wave your hand, Sister Wilson, work hard and diligent, diligently to put on a wonderful uh, presentation uh, of Vacation Bible School. So we're looking forward to that. Now, coming up also in the month of July, normally we have the Heart of Texas Fellowship in June, the first week of June. However, we push that back. And so the Heart of Texas Fellowship will be 9 July. We'll be going right up the road to Harker Heights, Texas, where the pastor there is none other than Pastor Alonzo Pinckney and District Elder Francis Pinckney. Now, District Elder Pinckney will be the speaker for that service. We want you to come out and support the Heart of Texas Fellowship. The start time is 2 p.m. So please come out. We're going to start earlier so that we can get out early enough to still be daylight. And you can be in Sunday school that next Sunday. Amen? All right. And also we have coming up our 13th annual pastoral appreciation and church anniversary. Amen. We are so grateful uh, for all of you supporting this ministry over the years. Uh, you, it has been a blessing to pastor you. And uh, especially uh, in the time we're in, we're still in a pandemic. Uh, but God has continued to sustain us and not only sustain us, but cause us to thrive. So we want you to support this year's pastoral appreciation. And again, the dates are the 29th through the 31st of July right here at the temple. And then we're going to close it out that Sunday with the appreciation dinner. Amen. Thank you again for supporting our pastoral appreciation. What have we been teaching uh, for? Uh, this is our second week. This is part two. Uh, we've been teaching a subject that I believe is very important and needed in the church today. And what are we teaching? How to know the will of God. How to know the will of God. Now, every one of us that is born again, and I'm talking about those of us that have gone through the regeneration process, uh, as we've been reading from the book of 2 Corinthians, to Paul talking about, uh, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is what? a new creature, and then he declares that all old things have what? Passed away. We, last week we talked about, we, we say when somebody dies, we say, oh, did you hear so-and-so? They what? They, in other words, we, what we're saying is they have died. And so when Paul says in 2 Corinthians, if you're a new creature in Christ, old things, they what? Passed away. What does that mean? They died. What died? Your, your lust for sin, your, your desire for sin died, which is a direct reference again to Romans, the sixth chapter uh, that talks about if we, if we be dead uh, with Christ, we, we are dead to sin. We, that means we no more have an appetite for sin. Uh, Y'all know uh, my, one of my... Uh, I don't want to say weaknesses, but one of my vices, I love soft chocolate chip cookies. Uh, Deacon Rogers, especially if they're chunk, you know, they, they come out with that chocolate chunk, Dr. Singleton. Just, you know, this, this whole supersize thing over the 25 years, 30 years, just got to God tell you. But Lord, I, I like them. Uh, I haven't lost my desire since I was a child for chocolate chip cookies, but I make sure I don't overdo it when it comes to chocolate chip cookies. You would know my, our last blessing, our last quiver in our basket. Uh, Bethany is 17, uh, got her first job. Where is she working? At that new cookie place in Harker Heights. Call y'all. Oh, it's Lord, some of y'all. I, I get the oil after service and lay hands on those of you that's been out the cookie crumble or crumble cookie and just done lost your mind. Hello, I didn't realize that you could buy minis. You know the, the regular side. No, y'all don't want to do that. Y'all going in there getting them hand size cookies. That's a half an inch to an inch, and y'all know he don't need no cookies. Pray for Chaplain Long. Hello, somebody. But we need to make sure we don't overdo it. And so I know that it is the will of God that I don't overdo it. Why? Because if I continue on that path and I have a diet of cookies and 
and and Lord, I like my Jolly Ranchers and Skittles. I don't do a lot of sweet, but can I like my Skittles? I'm like Marshawn Lynch when it comes to Skittles. I like all of them except for the original. Hey, isn't that crazy? <laughs> but if I can, if I had a daily diet of chocolate chip cookies, ice cream, Sunday on Sunday a diet of Skittles every day, what's going to happen to me? I cannot complain when I go to the doctor and they come in the office and they sit down and y'all know how they look over them glasses at you when they got your blood work back and, and they begin to tell you you're pre uh, or diabetic or you are, you have stage to, oh, some of y'all know, some of y'all done heard that kind of stuff from your doctors. Uh, the first time I heard it, I, I said, the devil is a liar. You better get on up out of here. And you know what? He made me eat them words as he began to tell me what my diet was. And I'm trying to look on that paper. How does he know? And I called my wife. You've been talking to my doctor. <laughs> he said, you like to drink sodas when you eat. Yes, sir. You probably drink more than one. Yeah, I drink two. <laughs> you know, because I drink a lot when I'm eating. He said, you like salad, don't you? Yeah, I do. I love you. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's greens, right? Yeah, I like salad. You're dressing this ranch, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's like you, you, you like bread, too, don't you? Like all of it. I like sourdough. I like wheat. I like all grain. I like white. I like light. I like it all. He said, yeah, I can tell. I'm like, well, what's wrong with bread? And he begins to break down why my body cannot have an overabundance of a certain things. Then he begins to tell me, as you age, your diet has to change as you age. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me I can't eat no Boston baked beans? I can't eat no juju beans? Oh, I'm helping somebody. No, I can mics. These young people don't know what I'm talking about right now. Uh-uh, no, no moon pies. Help us, Jesus. Lord, I'm so sorry. Why don't they there? Why? Because your body slows down. Now watch. What, what, is this, what does this have to do with the will of God? The Bible talks to us, and we read it in, uh, let's go there real quick. We're going to go to Romans 12, verse 1. Um, we're going to show you how it lines up. Yes, we are. What does the Bible say? Romans the 12th chapter. Verse number one, get your Bibles, follow along with us. Hello, we want you to see it. Because when you sit in those positions, in the doctor's office, wherever you may be, and you hear these conversations that's referencing you, you got to come back to self. Amen? Romans, the 12th chapter, just to preface real quick, and then we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Look at verse number one. I'm going to read it for for you from the Amplified Translation. Listen at the Apostle Paul now. Listen at his verbiage. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren. Now, first and foremost, notice he identifies who he's talking to. He's talking to the church. Why, how do we know he's talking to church? To the church, which means saved folks. Because he says, I beseech you, therefore, who? Brethren. And beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to watch this, to make a decisive dedication, watch this, of your bodies, mm. presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, this is the Amplified Translation, consecrated and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Now, watch this. Verse number two, the Amplified Translation of Romans 12 and 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, this age. Now, let's talk about this age. Because we hear, I was listening to uh, uh, two preachers uh, today on a podcast, and they were talking about this age. And, and man, I'm telling you, they were laying it out. I mean, they talk about the age of access, the age of easy, and they laid it out. No, you, you, don't, have to, you don't have to till the ground no more. 
and plant your collard greens, your mustards, and your turnips. They don't know. See, no, they, none of them know what I'm talking about, Dr. Singleton. I love it when Dr. Singleton and Deacon Singleton, they send me uh, uh, little Ziploc bags uh, uh, from their garden, tomatoes and, and, and peppers and, and sugar cane. Some, what? Sugar cane? What's that? They, they, you show somebody, show one of these kids what some sugar cane is, and they start ducking because they think you're about to hit them. They think it's a stick. Uh huh. But look what he says. He says in this age, none of us in this age have to deal with farming. We don't have to go out to the chicken coop like I did and get the eggs, shoot the chickens out and go get the eggs. Raise your hand. You did that. Come on, raise your hand. Let me see. Who it is. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We got just two. Just two. That's all right. Uh, in this age, where do we go? We go to the first church of H-E-B. Uh huh. The Episcopal Diocese of Super Walmart does all the work for us and and now because we even before COVID but more so in COVID you don't even have to leave the comfort of your home because they have what curbside they have delivery service for groceries I remember when the milkman used to come around and, and, and he used to, uh, Swan, what I think it was Swan was on there, and they used to bring milk and put it on the front doorstep. And, and look, you could get ice cream. Sister, look, Sister Kerr, she's too young. She don't know nothing about that. She's still in her 30s. She don't know nothing about that. Uh -huh. You could get ice cream and, and, and cheese and all of this stuff. Y'all remember that stuff? Y'all don't remember that stuff. It's too young. Look what he says. He says, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after, here it is, and adapted to its external, look at this, superficial customs. I got to pause. I got to pause. Oh, Lord, y'all not going to like me tonight. I'm going I'm to help you, though, because I want you to know the will of God. I want you to know the will of God. Uh, yes, y'all know I resist it. Social media for a long time, sister. Uh, I did. I did. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Sheeta, I resisted it. I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on no Instagram. I, but even way back, no MySpace. Y'all don't remember that. Uh, yeah, my kids in the, my oldest ones in their 30s, they mid 30s, and, and, and they were begging me, can I have a MySpace? No. You know why I said no? I didn't know what it was. <laughs> no. It's of the devil. <laughs> Uh huh. I resisted social media. Why? Because I know Pastor Kirkland and somebody going to send something. They're going to post something foolish and I can't resist calling foolishness out. I'm so pleased with myself, Minister Sheeta, because I haven't. I haven't done it. I haven't. I haven't. You know why? Because everybody has free will. Mm, they do. They have free will. I saw the post. Many of you saw it. Why are we talking about this age now? I saw the, the, the news clipping, and then I went on YouTube so I could see all of it. Where those young ladies went down to Joel Osteen's church. Y'all know that. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember Joel Osteen? He, he, he's just one of the nicest preachers. I ain't never seen him. He ain't got no Geno Jenner's mentality. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all don't know who that is. Some of y'all do. Just nice. And they get up in there and took their clothes off. This woman just pulled her dress off with her, you know, she had on a sports bra and some granny panties and, you know, with some hands on it and screaming, it's my body. And, and cussing, F this and I can do what I want. I mean, right there in the middle of the service. I said, Lord, if they, they couldn't do that here, I'd be in jail, y'all. Because I'm, I'm going I'm to snatch you. <laughs> Not in God's house. God's house is holy. I told y'all, see, somebody's going to hear this. They're going to see this on the internet. They're going to come down and try me. I, I'm going to like that song came out, Try Jesus. Don't try me. I lay holy hands. All right, listen, I'm just kidding. Look what he said. Look, so these, these people got up in the middle of church. This, and he said, be not conformed. Look what he says. The Amplified says, to this world, this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial custom. I would have never in my life thought somebody would have the gall, the audacity, the boldness to go in a church and stand up in the church and not only scream your message but start cussing like you done lost your mind. But the church cannot do nothing about it. No, they're not. the security ushered them on out. They was nice. 
They were nice, y'all. Yes, they were. They were real nice. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm going to drag you, kicking, screaming. You going out the door. Hmm? Because you don't know how to act in the house of God. I'm in the Bible. Listen, let's go. Let's go. Let's keep reading. Look what he says. Keep reading, y'all. So he says, don't, don't be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial culture, but be transformed, changed. The purpose of new life and new birth is to change you. If you call yourself saved and you have not changed, I question your salvation. Mm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ah. You might have been the most womanizing man in the world. But when you get married, if you don't change, them sisters look at now, you got that right, pastor. <laughs> he better change. From them womanizing ways. Why? Because he has now gone into covenant with that woman. So when we are transformed, we have to change. Let's look what he says. Keep reading. Verse 2, he says, how did you change? By the entire. This is where, This is for those that say, girl, we're not back in the day. Uh-uh. He says, by the entire renewal of your mind by his new ideals and his new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves this is what you need. See, several of you in here have had to prove for yourself. I'm really saved. Why? Because the Lord designed a test. He designed a trial, a tribulation. He allowed some trouble to come down your street, find your address, and and check and test your transformation and watch and several of you you have the testimony and he keep on testing me he keep on trying me he keep prov- providing opportunities for me to outgrow self mm. keep reading let's look what he says he says prove for yourselves what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Now, the Lord has already, we read Jeremiah, we know Jeremiah 29 and 11, we know it. He said, I know the thoughts that I think, the plans that I have devised. He knows everything about you that he has set for you. God knows it. Why? Because he is, you said it, he's the author and he's the what? Finisher. He's the alpha and he's what? Omega. He is my beginning and he is your what? Ending. So if he is all that, you got to trust that God knows how to shape you. Mm -hmm. He does. He knows how to shape you. Now, we, we gave you some insight uh, about your will, and you remember Jesus' example in the Garden of Gethsemane. Go back to the, uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going there, but when you go back to the Gospel of Matthew and Mark, and you read Jesus' experience in the Garden of Gethsemane, now he brings with him some, some fellow uh, 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 believers. He brings some Christian buddies with him, but they can only go but so far. Watch this. It is not the will of God for everybody to be with you all the time. Mm. Okay. Look what he said. Look, I'll put this up for you. All right. Well, here it is. When your will is whose? Is God's will, you will have your will. Remember Jesus' word as he's praying. He knows what's going to happen. He has insight. Why? John tells us in the first chapter of John who Jesus is. He is God manifested in a fleshly body. He knows what's going to happen. But when he prays, he says, Lord, if it what? Be thy will. Let this cup do what? Pass from him. But then he comes back. Watch this. This is what the transformation where the mind has changed comes into play. But nevertheless, not whose will. This is a prayer every Christian has to pray daily. If you've never heard this before, hear this tonight. 
you need to pray a prayer daily. Whatever your prayer is, your prayer has to needs to end somewhere toward the crescendo of your prayer. You need to say, but Lord, nevertheless, not my will for this day, but your will for me for this day. And that's what we have to pray. That's why he said, uh, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. When he thinks those thoughts and they filter down to the earth, his will has to be done. Now, Last week, y'all, I hope y'all did any studying on this. We talked about the two wills of God. There are multiple wills, uh, and we talked about Sunday, we talked about the promises of God. Uh, there's um, over 8,400 promises of God, uh, but 7,700 of those promises are directly directed toward man, humankind. So we found out God's will of decree or his sovereign will, and then God's will of command. Now, a good example of God's will of decree or sovereign will is the, the exact reference I just made to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prays. He, he, it, it was God's sovereign will or his, his sovereign decree that Jesus must be martyred. He must die. Why? Because it was, it was a part of, of this new dispensation of grace to be ushered in that he must die. Why? So that he can atone for the sin of the world. So God's sovereign will had to be done. And Jesus, even though he knew it had to be done, he still asked. And some of you, you, you still have the boldness and the temerity to ask God certain things that you know he's not going to reverse. But it doesn't stop you from asking. Aren't you amazed sometimes at what your children will ask you for? Knowing they had not cleaned no room, had not washed no dishes, had not done no homework. Listen, listen, uh-uh, no, y'all, I'm trying to help y'all. But they'll still ask you for some money. Ooh, I'm, uh, oh, them children, I lost the children. I lost them with that one. We, we do God the same way. Oh, oh. What? No, pastor. Yeah, you with your 30 something year old, 40 of some year old, 50 something year old self, 70 something year old, 80 something year old. We have the temerity to go and ask God knowing we haven't done our part first. All right. We're talking about how to know God's will. Okay. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me, right? All right. Proverbs 16 and 3. Proverbs 16 and 3, the Amplified Translation says, commit your works, how to know the will of God. Proverbs 16 and 3, the Amplified Translation says, commit your works to the Lord. Not some of them, not half, could admit all. Watch this. Submit and trust them to him and your plans will succeed. That we gave you this Sunday. If you respond to his will and guidance, this is what God is telling us right now. Now, when God reveals to you what he wants for you, what his will is for you, how well do you respond? Another question. How quick do you respond? Mm. Uh -oh. How quick do you respond and say, yes, Lord? How quick do you submit to the will of God even when it doesn't feel good? Mm, all right, all right. We're going to see. We're going to dig into this. All right. I got my notes together tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's look at it. Let's go to James, the first chapter, verse 5 through 7. I want you to turn in your Bibles. I'm not giving you every scripture now. I know they're good back there. Mother, we thank you video production, but well, we want you to turn some pages. Go to James, the first chapter, the, the start at the fifth verse. James 1. Many of y'all already know what James says. You know he said, faith without. Mm -hmm. Let's see, James had a little bit more to say than just that, didn't he? James, the first chapter, look at verse mm, number five. And look at this. Now, some of us, we need to pray certain prayers specifically to God. Why? Because we're lacking in certain areas. We, we, we used the analogy earlier about uh, our diet. 
Now, we heard what Paul talked about, and, and sometimes I ask Christians when I read uh, Romans 12, verses 1 through 2, especially verse 1, uh, is he literally talking about presenting your body? Hmm. Is he literally talking about presenting your body a living sacrifice? Absolutely. But the difference between grace sacrifice and the Old Testament sacrifice is you don't have to die. You don't have to die spiritually in the process. You still got to die naturally. You got to die to all of those things that had you out of the will of God. Now, we know he's talking literally. Why? Oh, well, I came up in an age where we used to go knock on doors, pass our flyers. We, we don't see too much of that no more. Half y'all, y'all know y'all don't slam the door. Get off my porch. <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses come. Shh, shh. Y'all go FBI silent. Shh, cut that TV down. Son upstairs, mama, shut up. <laughs> in your own house. Let's look. Come on. I'm helping somebody tonight. James 1, verse number 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men, how? Liberally. Meaning, he gives it to you. Look at the Amplified says, verse 5. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of God, of, of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given him. <coughs> Notice what he said. The, I like to amplify translation because some of us, we, we know we've experienced that. Somebody asks you for something, you give it to them. And, and you, you, I knew, you, you know, you know about the lunchroom lady. Back when I was there, them lunchroom ladies was something, boy. They were, woo, they were, there was another one group of people that intimidated me. I was supposed to go get something to eat from them, Mr. Sheeta. And I'm like, can I have some mashed table? You want some what? Yeah, mashed potatoes. And they slap them down on you. Almost knock your tree off. <laughs> hmm? God does not give to us grudgingly. He doesn't give to us and then accuses us in the same process. Now, can I borrow something? I'm going to let you borrow this, but you know you ain't paid me back from the last time I let you borrow. But go on and take it. Him. God doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Paul says, I mean, James says, if you lack certain things, and some of us know this, we lack patience because the, the verse before that, verse 4, talking about patience. Some of us know we, we need, Lord, we need patience, but we won't pray for patience because we know to pray for patience means the Lord's got to devise a test, a trial, a trouble, a situation that's going what? Try your patience so you can what? Get over the hump. Mm -hmm. First lady, years ago, tell your neighbor, years ago, this ain't down. I used to tell her, I said, you need to pray for patience. Uh-uh. And I would say, I'm praying for patience for you. Uh-uh, don't pray that. <laughs> because she knew what the Lord would do in order to what? Bless her with more patience. Because he said, and the trying of your faith, what? Worketh what? Patience. So when your faith is tried, your faith has to stretch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Your patience will try when you try to fit into that dress. What in the world? Brother, you try to get in them pants and you know their thighs way bigger than what they used to be. You still trying and you walking around looking like a, a Tamla man husband on, on, this, on the show walking around. You tried your faith. Now go on down to the store and get you some that fit. The Lord, the, he, see, the Lord is not going to stretch. He's not going to stretch your faith. He's going to provide an opportunity for you to stretch your faith. Keep, keep reading. Let's go back. If you like these things, talk to him. Verse, verse 6 says, but let him ask how? In faith, not wavering. How many of you have killed your request in the second breath? You might not have said it verbally. You prayed it verbally. But in your mind, you killed your prayer with doubt, with unbelief, with fear. 
See, this, these are the things that we have to be cautious about. And when you want to know the will of God, the will of God is for you to not doubt, to not live in fear. He tells us he have not given us the what? Spirit of fear. And if he haven't given us the spirit of fear, I'm telling you now, he didn't give you the spirit of doubt. He didn't give you the spirit of unbelief. He didn't give you any of those things. We've got to learn how to grow past this stuff. Let's keep reading. Verse 6 says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that waver is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, for let not that man think, here it is, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Look at the, look at this, the Amplified translation says, for truly, let, let not such a person imagine you, you cannot even imagine or dream. Yeah, somebody used to say, don't even dream. If you dream you ate my cookies, you better wake up and slap yourself. I used to tell my kids stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They already knew the rule. <clears throat> you can have what you want, but you do not have license. You do not have the authority or the right to eat or drink the last. I, 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 I alone. And then what would they do, Chaplain Long? I, I go in there to get the get me a glass of tea, and it's just a cone up in there. <clears throat> and I call all of them down, come lined up, and pass it. Don't drink you a sip, and pass it all the way down till it's all gone. Now what? I'm finna whoop all of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I ain't do that. I ain't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My kids at home, they were like, yes, he did. No, I didn't. <laughs> He says, don't even imagine. Look at the Amplified Translation, verse 7 says, for truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. Look, look, because God doesn't deal in doubt, he doesn't deal in doubt, the writer tells us that if you're going to believe God, you must first what believe that he is God and that he's what a rewarder of them that do what? diligently seek after him. That, listen, sis, that, that brother didn't, he didn't just, uh, Chaplain Long didn't just call Sister Long once a week. Hello? I didn't just call uh, uh, Dr. Kathy, well, you know, once or twice a, a month. I would be all down the hall. You remember they had the court, and you run the court all the way down. Y'all was too young to remember that. Be off trying to, in the bathroom with the court in the door, trying to get some privacy so I can talk to so so. I call every day. Then some of you got blessed because you could get the phone that, that had the antenna on it, and you got that antenna all sticking all up, and you all down the hall, and, and then got the nerve to walk out on the front porch trying to floss for your neighbors and friends, but then you hear that, sh 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 you got to get back in the house. I called her every day. Why? Because I was pursuing her. And if you want something from God, you've got to pursue God like you really want him. Well, I love you, Lord. You're just so good and all this and that. And then you don't pick your Bible up. Not one time from Wednesday to Sunday. Ooh, I'm helping somebody. How to know the will of God? This is why some of y'all are going to stay where you at. You're never going to the higher heights and deeper depths that God has prepared for you because you don't really want God. Oh, Lord. Yes, I do. <laughs> Show me a person without actions, and I'll show you a person without faith. Show me a person with actions, I'll show you a person with faith. Mm -hmm. How to know the will of God. We, we, he, he, he doesn't play. Mm -hmm. When you are lined up with God as you're supposed to be, the Lord will start to line up your life. He will. He will. Joseph is a great example of how to line yourself up with God in spite of what you're dealing with. Go back to Genesis and read it. And it culminates in that 37th chapter. This young man 
from a very early age, parents, this is why you have to put a foundation in your children while they're young. You already know. We talk about them terrible twos, but what about them terrible teens? Oh, Lord, gee. let me get the oil. I lay hands after service, bring them on up. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my children to tell you. <clears throat> my daughter, last one she'll tell you too. I done woke up out of my sleep, 3 a.m., just as early as I just want to be. My prayer time, you know, I mean, I am woke straight up. I'm walking in the house, and my spirit is, um, I, I go get the oil, lay on the hand. I go up in, I lay hands on everybody, first lady too, all of them. In the house, I'm laying hands on walls and the whole house, consecrated. Why? You got to learn how to drive the enemy out of your territory. You got to learn how to how to make that territory Satan proof. We talked about pray proof in your life, P R E Y, proof in your life. How do you pray proof? Don't become an easy target through complacency. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember what they used to teach us when we was kids. I don't mind. I said you ain't never said nothing like that. It's the devil's playground. They, they used to tell me that stuff. They used to tell me that. It's true. It is true. Now, the, uh, we, we gave you this one Sunday. I want to give it to you again. Proverbs 16 and 3. The Good News Translation says, now, this is those that know the will of God and you are lined up with the will of God. I'm going to give you this nugget early, okay? When you ask the Lord to bless your plans, mm -hmm, you did what? We Proverbs 29, 18, you already know. We did what Habakkuk 2 uh, uh, three said, we wrote our vision. Y'all think Oprah came up with a vision boy? Oprah was in the word. I ain't saying she was saved, but she got some out of it. You wrote it down on your vision board. It's there. But did you ask God to bless your plans? And watch this. And you got to stand for Remember I told you, the end of that prayer, the crescendo has to, nevertheless, not my plans, but your plan. Let my plans line up. Remember, we showed it to you. When your plans, look, when your will is God's will, watch this. When your will is God's will, God's will, you will have your will. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> All right. All right, go back. Proverbs 16 and 3, the Good News Translation says, ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. We got to teach our young people this early. We got to teach them how to take their plans, take their dreams, take their hopes, write them down, and then we got to teach them how to pray over those plans and dreams and hopes. Teach them how to pray over it, and then listen, how to pray the Lord lines them up with his will. Because how many of you already know? Your plans were written down, and then the Lord revealed to you his will, and your plans became, were amended. You had to go back, cross it out. That's not in his will for me. And then you had to go in and pencil in what his will was. You had to go in and take some stuff completely off, and then you had to go back and read. And then when you finished, it was like that, like that scratch paper. You, all of what you originally had has changed drastically. Why? Because I want to know the will of God for my life. And when he shows it to you, be, be willing to adjust. All right, I'm over, I'm over my time. Amen. We hope you have heard something to bless you tonight. And, and I'm telling you now, God knows, we say it all the time, God knows my heart. <laughs> First Thessalonians 4, we're going to pick this up next week. First Thessalonians 4, God knows my heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, it, it say that. Hmm? He's the only one that's got access to it. And that's why he has got to perform open heart surgery on some of us. Uh huh. That's, that's the, I think the old prophet uh, Ezekiel talked about that open heart surgery the Lord has got to perform on some of you with that stony heart. He's got to perform open heart surgery in order to plant that heart of flesh. In other words, he's got to plant a receptive heart in you. Some of us didn't have a receptive heart to the will of God, and so the Lord had to perform open heart surgery to give you a heart that was receptive to his will. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. 
Thank you tonight. I hope you enjoyed the word. Those of you at home, God bless you. They're going to put the banners at the bottom of the screen. If you didn't get a chance to sow a seed, a love offering, your tithes, your offering, please do so. We're so grateful for all of our e-congregation members, those that are watching us from Iowa, from Florida, Georgia, all over the world. Thank God for you. We appreciate you. You are part of this ministry, and uh, we, we are blessed. Uh, and please share it. We want to get those numbers up. I want to see this word go to as many people as possible, and we can only do it with your help. All right. For those of you who are watching us live, we hope to see you Sunday morning with the blessing of the Lord. God bless you, and good night. Y'all got to count me down when I do that. Amen. And five.